I'm on my deck. And um, I just, I have a little message thing that I send out to a few people and tell them I'm going live. And then I do. And here I am. Anyway, a bear was on the deck today. You imagine a bear. He was a teenager bear. He wasn't little and he wasn't real big. And he was right over here at the corner there. Right? Right where this railing thing is on the ground. Right on the other side of it. And Willem was in the house and he looked out the living room door just by chance. And the, the bear noticed him and turned around and wandered down and, and into the valley. And who knows where he went from there. Could be anywhere. Anyway, one day maybe I'll see him. We don't have, we don't eat meat. We don't cook meat. I suppose the odd time we have sausages, but very, very rarely. Hi, Susan. I know you guys have all missed talking to each other. Anyway, so there was air here. <laughs> Imagine. I didn't get to see him. But I had three other encounters with, with animals today. Deer. And a broad-winged hawk. So I went down the hill. I turned and went in by the ponds. Down to the moat. And as I was walking along. Yes, there. Imagine. A bear. I was walking along the moat. No, along. This is Kingfisher Lane. So I was walking along that. And, and there was a deer on the other side. I, I was walking down, he was maybe five feet or ten feet off the path in the, standing in the in the grasses, the very tall grass. And I saw him. He had a black face. So we have black face and brown face. And um, this is a new one. I've seen him a few times now. And I saw him one day. He had a baby. We were walk I was walking down the highway and and I was on the on the far side and he was on the far side and I saw him standing there by the roadside so I bent down and I pulled up some clover or something and put it in my mouth and was chewing it you know and I wiggled my butt while I bent over right because that's what they do they, are, they put their tail up and then well once they put their tail up they're gone but they wiggled their butt when everything is okay so I wiggled my butt and then I um, and then he and a baby crossed the road, the highway. And so I carried on and he carried on. And then a little while later, he came back on my side with the baby, she and her baby. And they walked further. And then at the grass hut, they, they crossed the road and they went in beside the grass hut. Um, and then um, I got further along and I saw this big brown. I mean, it was, to me, it was like the size of a cow, this back end. And then I saw he was behind the basketry, the basketry hut. And I got past him and, or, or no, I got the, and he, I saw his head out the other side of the hut. And then he turned and he, he got up and he went the other way. Anyway, that was a, a few days ago. So today I was walking along down here and he was, Hi Rose, you have a bear there too, a small one wreaking habit with your bird feeder. You know, this is interesting because I haven't fed any of the birds or animals for quite a while. There was a day I fed the squirrels. I put stuff on the railing. It's probably a week ago now. But I haven't been feeding them. Which is just as well, I suppose. There's no food here for them. It's, I think the birds need to teach their babies how to find food without coming here. But I feed them sometimes. And the raccoons, we still have raccoons. We have two raccoons. One, but And they both come out during the day. <sighs> so, um, what was I going to say? So I was, I was walking along in the, in the, where we've, we've mowed down there along the pond. And so I saw him and I bent down and ate, and I wiggled my butt a bit, and I said, it's okay, it's just me, which is, oh, thank you. Ta-da. This is my old lady hairstyle, or my um, 
Swedish hairstyle. Thanks, Rose. Anyway, and so this deer with the black face, he watched me and I just kind of wandered along. And, and then I got further, I got to Teardrop Point, which is where the road forks and goes around the moat. I call that Teardrop Point because it's the shape of a teardrop. And there was another deer, which is the brown-faced deer, which I've had for a few years, I think. Anyway, she was further down there, and I did the same thing. I bent over, and I took some grass and put it in my mouth, and I kind of stayed bent over, and I walked along, hunched over. And, and she turned, and she kind of trotted off. She wasn't in a big hurry. She didn't put her tail up like she was fleeing danger. Um, the, so let's see. Okay, and then, so that was those two. And then I, I walked into, the, uh, there's a spot where the water overflows the moat. You know where I mean? Where it's always flooded there. Keep getting these messages about my grandchildren. Anyway, um, uh, and I needed a, I haven't been able to get to my A-frame because the grass is too high. It's really high. Like some of the grass is over my head. It's very high. So I started cutting a pathway from the moat road into the bushes, into the alder, alders. And I kept cutting and cutting. I have this big thing. It's, it's like a foot. You know, it's, I can't show you. It goes down with the, the clippers at the bottom. A hand, and then the handle's like that. You open and close the handles and it snips, snip, snip, snip. So I push it in as far as it goes and cut. And then push it in and cut. Push it in and cut. And I come back and I do it again. I keep pushing it in and cutting. And I do it all around. And then I take my hand halfway up the grass and I just sort of gather it like this. And the loose stuff sort of falls. And then I... I grab that and I put it on a pile until I'm too far from the pile. Hi, Suze. It's very mild here today. It feels very nice. It's so nice to have it. a nice cool breeze. Anyway, so, um, so then, so I was going through there, cutting my way through the, the woods, which I didn't think there would be that much, um, I didn't think that would be there would be so thick in there because it's under the shade of the alders mostly, but no. So the sedge, you know, that's about four feet high or something, and the grass is in there too. And then there was nettles, and then there were ferns, and everything was very thick. So I try, and I was getting mosquito bitten all the time. But thank heavens, my skin—I don't seem to be able to feel it so much anymore. Must be because I'm getting old. Nothing works like it did. So maybe my nerves aren't firing quite the way they used to. Anyway, but they did. I don't bump up from mosquitoes, and now I don't even notice them. Anyway, so, um, and I can't either. <laughs> there she goes, down the hill. Over the hill. Anyway, I cut and cut and cut, and then I'm, I get closer to the stream, and and I, um, and then I heard this snorting, really loud snorting. Snort, 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 snort. Susan says, a gathering of beautiful women and all we need is Ellen and Regina. Regina. <clears throat> oh, the deer snorted at you, eh, Rose? Well, the deer were pretty, I couldn't see them. It was very dense in there where I was. So I couldn't see them, but I could hear them. I think that that might be when the, telling the baby that there's danger and making the baby hide. It was warning to the, to the baby, I believe. Because the last time that happened was the other day when I saw the other deer and I was getting near the pond. I was cutting a pathway or I was just walking near the pond and all the animal, all the birds were 
were upset that I was there. Lots of birds, and they were calling their the other birds as well. They stomped their feet at you too, eh, Rose? Yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, they'll stomp their feet and snort and get you to move so they can find out what you are, because they don't know exactly what's going on in the woods. But they can hear everything for a long way. Can they smell you? A bear can smell everything. Let's see, the eagle saw it, the deer heard it, a pine needle fell in the forest. An eagle saw it, a bear smelled it, and the deer heard it. I do love the critters. It's really nice. I love it. Anyway, so, um, so the other day I heard the snorting, a lot of snorting, and, and then I went through by um, the other pond, the little pond on the stream. That's called Serenity Dippity Pond. We used to call it the lower pond years ago. Anyway, I'm at Serenity Dippity Pond, and when I got beside it, there was there was a, a, a fawn in the water, and the the soil there is very thick in the water. It's like it's like jello. It's really thick. And it's silt that has deposited there over the years because it was attached to the stream. It's not attached to the stream anymore. <clears throat> anyway, so, so this baby was in there and his head and his shoulders were out and his back and his part of his rump was out. But the rest of him was in. So he was standing up in that muck there, but he was totally motionless. He never moved a bit. He had huge ears and a, a big face, but he was all speckled. You had to stop walking for a while due to bear. Well, I think it's because we weren't here for a while and they got pretty confident. But it's surprising that the bear came here because there's nothing really here for him to eat. There's no berries or anything. And it's pretty clean. There's not any there's no new compost or anything, and we don't have the smell of um, meat or anything, or fat. Anyway, I think he just wandered through. But, <clears throat> so, so this little fawn that was in the water, that was really interesting. She took down the oranges she had up for the Orioles. Yeah. You know, all that walking, and I didn't get a single tick on me. All that tall, thick grass with the deer trail through it. Like, some places you could see that this was the deer path. Boy, was I tired by the time I got to the A-frame. And then I got to the A-frame, and, you know, I got to the bridge and went across the bridge. And the A-frame was, it was also surrounded by very tall grass all the way to the stream. Like, if I didn't know where everything was, I wouldn't have found it all. But I found it and then I cut in front of it between it and the stream so I can have a little area there. And then I sat down. And then I was, I had a, um, my, my poncho was on the wall there. Everything stays dry in that little A-frame. It's amazing, even though it's got an opening. Patchouli keeps insects away from me. Glad you didn't get any ticks and glad you made it to the A-frame. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was good. So I sat in the A-frame for a few minutes. And then I moved, the poncho was kind of behind the chair a bit, and so I was moving it out of the way, and I I guess I squished it. And then it occurred to me that what if there's a, a bee nest in that, you know, because bees do that. And so then I got up and I came out, and, and I saw one bee. It looked like a honeybee, but anyway, and I, I picked up the towel that was off of it and opened the towel and shook it out, and that was clean. And, and, oh, I know, before I got up, I, when I pushed it over, I kind of opened the, the poncho a little bit and I saw the remnant of a paper wasp nest. You know, it was quite small and it was just a curved shell, kind of light, off-white. And so then I got right up and I got out of there. And then I reached in and I got the towel and shook it out. And then I put the towel around me just in case I was going to get bitten, stung. And um, I looked back in, and then I took the poncho up, and I shook it out. And there were no bees in it, but there were lots of these paper wasp nest um, 
it's just a circle. Just a little, um, little shell and little bits of shell. I shook it out and then I put it up on top of the A-frame on the outside, but it rolled up. It rolled all the way down. And I looked in and there were lots of mosquitoes everywhere, having cut all the grass and everything that disturbed them. And there was a couple of bees, two bees, and they were just small bees. Anyway, so I couldn't sit in there anymore. So then I cut a pathway through from the A-frame through to the grass hut teepee, which was great. That was very nice. And then I had a place to sit. I sat in my double chair. I, I fixed it yesterday. I put lots of, or the day before, I put all this tall grass I had cut. I, I wove it. I put it on the back of the teep of the, like half of it, had, the grass had come off. I do have an itch on my leg. Bees nests behind me on my swing. No, I don't think so. Where? This is, this is um, fleece. They're not on my swing. There is a bird's nest up there, though. See that? Fleece. That's okay. <laughs> Phew. <sighs> <clears throat> Anyway, so, so um, let's see, I sat there for a while <clears throat> and went inside. It's so nice inside. It's so nice inside. The other day, my little granddaughter was here with me, and she loved it in there. She wanted to lay down in the hammock and just, she says, let's just lay here until Mommy comes, and we'll just see her when she comes by. Of course, she couldn't see her when she comes by, because people go by, but they go by fast. Anyway, and I couldn't imagine having to carry her, <laughs> a sleeping child, and I didn't have a car. And so that was not going to happen. So anyway, but she loved it in there. And there's a few willow bushes down there, a few willow plants. And I've been weaving the shoots, and I take two of them, and I, let's see if I can do this. I can do it with two fingers. I take, I take the, the, the pieces, and I, I weave them over, and then those two cross, and then I weave it around the next one. And then they cross again, and then I weave it around the next one. I know they got to cross first. Around the <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Hey, what happened there? Sorry. Turned around. Anyway, so I, I was weaving across, twining back and forth. You, you go across one, and then you twist. And then you go across and twist, and the next one and twist. So that they're all, and then I get to the other side and I weave back, and I, and then, the, and then the tall ones become the weavers, and so, and so I made this beautiful wall, which I think I can support as it grows taller. I will support it and have it arch over. And then there's these two more bushes, and <coughs> well, three. <coughs> anyway, so two more are kind of like little walls and I put a chair in between them and that gives me shelter from the west and from the road. It's kind of nice to have a spot. It's very close to the road and yet I can be in there and nobody can see me when I feel like, you know, just hanging out there. So I hung out in a little chair there for a while then I came back up. So the next time I saw an animal, I was on our road. I, I went down the highway and I turned up our our dirt road, our gravel road. And um, and there was a black-faced deer on the the left. I was on the left and he was on the left. And so I saw him and I said, "It's okay, it's just me." And I crossed the road. I sort of hunched down a bit, bent over. What's all this noise? Sounds like maybe trucks on the highway, I guess. So, I, and then I ate some grass. I bent over and I stuck some dandelions and... 
Yeah, they may like it if we talk sweetly to them. I always say the same thing. I always say, it's okay, it's just me. And I always use a high-pitched voice, because a low-pitched voice is danger. Oh, growl. That's an airplane. He's pretty low. <laughs> Save the growls for the humans. So I crossed the road, and then I was eating, pretending to eat. And he crossed the road too. He came on my side of the road. And so then I crossed to the other side of the road, and I ate some more, and I kind of glanced at him. I took a picture over my, I took a, a selfie with him in the background, so he was like right there, but back a ways in the tall grass. I took a couple pictures to show that he was right there and he didn't mind me. Maybe I'll put it on for the photo for this one. Anyway, that was really cool. That was really cool. And then I came up to the house. And on the way I heard this high-pitched sound. And I thought it was a wood peewee because they make a high-pitched sound. but it up the other day and it was a it uh, I did it with that bird net app and it was a broad winged hawk I've never had a broad winged hawk before and I have a hard time telling which direction the sound is coming from I used to be able to pinpoint a sound but now I can't tell if it's in front or behind I can't even tell which side it's on but it was quite close it was really really close to me so I looked through the trees and I saw a big ball in the trees, which could have been a nest. I don't know what a Broadwind hawk nest looks like. I have a, a bird nest book, but it's for western birds. Maybe Broadwing hawks are in the west as well. I'll have to check that out. And then I got home, and Willem had tried to phone me, but I don't have service down there. I was going to, I tried to make a video down there, but no service. One day they'll put better towers up here. They put one up, but it's about 10 minutes away. So five minutes from it. Nan, when I made it to Canada, I have a list I want you to teach me how to do, and I want to sit on that swing with you. So, are you coming? I'm. We're going to be home now. It doesn't appear that we're going to go and be at the camp. We have, we have other things that we need to take care of now. So we might go over there, a bit, you know, like a weekend now and then or something. But mostly, I think we're going to be at home. So if you want to come and visit. Oh yes, you're recovering. Right, we're finished recovering. I guess it takes a long time to recover too. There's a, when people fly into Canada now, if you fly in through Toronto, they have this, you have to have, they do random COVID testing still. Oh, next summer. Stomach surgery. I'm sorry you had stomach surgery. That must hurt. But, Things will probably be better, right? <sighs> hmm. This getting old is interesting. I really like being home. I'm glad you're better this week. Yeah. Oh, nettle tea. Yes, that's a good one. I love Canada Day. Usually there's a lot going on in Ottawa. And there's fireworks when it gets dark. And I, I used to, when we lived there, we used to take the kids and go to, go to Majors Hill Park, which is right behind the, the, the can, behind the library parliament. It's the big circle building with the tower. And we used to, um, it was just wall to wall people. But this year, I don't know. There's a lot of. A lot of strange people, a lot of strange things happening. People that are, yesterday we were, I was in Ottawa and there were groups, there was huge, almost like parades of people. Yeah, hi Grateful. 
they were parades of people that were carrying Canada flags, and one of them had a sign, communism has no place here in Canada or something. And you know what? Can there is no communism in Canada. I mean, there's there's about 20 parties, and there is the Communist Party, but nobody ever votes for them. <clears throat> it's the liberals and the conservatives, and they always are the ones that have the majority, one or the other, or if they've got a minority, you know. But they... Um, you know, like, we have a democracy. We are not a communist country. We have democratic elections, and everything is fair, and just like it's all fair in the United States, and Trump lied, and he wanted to not leave office, and so he manufactured this huge lie, and so many people have fallen for it. But anyway, I don't want to get into that, but you know my my point on it, and we are not a communist country, and I'm not for communism, but I do love Trump, uh, not um Trudeau. Trudeau is a good a good prime minister, and I think that we have good people leading us. And I love Canada, and I love Canada Day, but there's a lot of this violent, this American sentiment has come up to Canada. It's kind of weird. I don't know. You see, Canadians don't talk about politics or religion. That's sort of the way we were taught. I was taught never to talk about politics or religion. Of course, I do. But, you know, I think that's a good, <laughs> I think that's kind of a good thing to do, not talk about it. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, there's, um, they, there were guns found and at the protests and these, um, yeah, Canada is a really wonderful place. There's this guy, there's this guy that comes to Canada every summer and has a cottage here or stays in a cottage or something. And he is a retired police officer from New York City. And when he comes to Canada, he checks his, he leaves his gun with a friend. And he comes across the border and he never thinks about having a gun after that. But he goes back across the border and he gets his gun because he wouldn't be in New York City without it. Of course, he was an officer there, so he knows what kind of stuff goes on down there. But Canada is a peaceful place. We don't have these mass shootings like down there. Thank heavens. Thank heavens. People just aren't into that. People are peaceful and they're polite and courteous and it's a nice place. Perhaps it's the lead in the water. Do you know that the that that there are 4,000 cities that still have leaded pipes in the United States? on my bucket list to go to Canada. Never dreamed I'd know someone who lives up there. Now I have you, Nancy. Yes, and you can come and hang out with me. We can do all kinds of stuff. You can teach me your crafty stuff and I'll teach you what I know. <sighs> it was really cool, you know, at the camp one day, um, my one of my companion, um, like there's us two and then there's a husband and wife and so there are senior, the senior companions and we're the junior companions. And so she, um, her son had a, a, a weed in the yard, in his garden. And he, yes, and we'll laugh and sing in the sunshine. We'll sing in the, how does that song go? We'll sing in the, we'll sing in the sunshine. We'll laugh every day. I have to Google that one. Yeah, what is, how does it go? Sing it for me. <laughs> ah, it's good to be home. It's good to be here. It's so, it got so overgrown, but I think I've tamed a lot of it now. I've got a pathway here in front of me. You see, oops, did you go away? See all this stuff? This was all just logs. You remember it looked like that? I put cow manure over it, and I covered it with cow manure, and I put, all kinds of flower seeds. These are the purple bells. I don't. I think they're Scottish bells or something. And there's other things down below. And but I, I made a path over there. I cut a path and I I did the lawn. Thanks. Yeah, isn't that a gorgeous view? And I mowed down there.
In the morning, I look out my window and I see a deer walking on that path. We cut the path. We got the lawnmower down there and we did the weed, the weed eater and the lawnmower and went all the way around the moat. I love paths too, but they have to be wide enough that the dew on the grasses beside it is not falling over in front of you. But I did it around the end of the pond too. The pond ends over there somewhere. So it's quite a long pond, but I, I cut the pathway around the end and I cut it underneath that nice swing where I have a view under the sumac. Yeah, the dew gets you wet. <laughs> if you have a stick along and you can push everything with a stick, that helps. So it's really nice to weave the willow down there and to recover my little the shelter that goes over your head with a double chair by the highway down there. And it's got this nice little this grass hut shelter, but the grass had come apart from about a foot down. It was gone. So I was glad when I cut the grass to be able to use this very long stuff in there. And I need to collect some straight sticks and thatch another wall in the teepee. I need to do some more thatching. Because wherever I thatch it, actually thatching with sedge grass over a stick, the water doesn't come through. Where it's not thatched, light comes through and everything else. And Anyway, that's going to be my little project. You can thatch with me. Yeah, I have cut some. I put it in the car. Where was that that I got that from? I don't know. Oh, the mosquito. These are small mosquitoes compared to the ones at the camp. And there was big, huge mosquitoes. They were twice as big as this. So now we have a bear. This is our fourth bear sighting in 25 years. We had one on the far side of the yard over by the sheep fence one year. It was coming from the woods down that way, and I don't know where it went after that. I didn't see that one. And then we had the tra the trail, the track, the tracks. I found, I found deer track. I was supposed to get my nerves burned on Tuesday in my spine. Now the idiots are telling me I need to COVID test on the weekend, so I'm not going to be able to do this. Had to cancel. Now I'm very angry right now. I'm sorry that's happening to you. Maybe it's just a challenge to see how much patience you have. Can you be happy and loving anyway? I mean, all we're doing on this earth is creating character, right? It's all a character development project. Mosquito bits. A mosquito smudge. Uh-oh, we got to get rid of that thing. Ha. Ha user on this channel. Ta-da! There we go. Yeah, staying peaceful is a challenge when you're right in the thick of it. Hi, Willem. Hi. How's my sweetheart? Your sweetheart is doing fine. Your sweetheart is uh, chopping up those chives. Uh, but um, it's a slow process. I wonder if I can do it with a blender. Well, you'll just get mush. Okay. Do you, I did hide the user. Okay. All right, I'll just do it the hard way then. Yeah, just cut it with scissors. Snip, 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 snip. Or you can just, with a knife, a really wide knife, and go chop, 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 chop. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. But maybe scissors is better. I don't know. I can try that. Rose says, hi, Willem. Rose. <laughs> hmm. Okay, see you later. All right. Hmm. I was telling you something, but I forget what it was. Oh, the COVID test. Oh, yeah, if you come to Canada and you go through Toronto Airport, they have this lineup. All the people that come into the Toronto Airport on flights have to go through this huge line and 
have proof of vaccinations too, I think. Maybe three. But not necessarily, it doesn't really matter when you had them, which is kind of silly because they're not usually, they're no, like none of us, unless we've had a vaccine in three months, none of us are vaccinated anymore. And I suppose it'll come back again in the fall. Oh well, enjoy today. But if you come into the Toronto airport, you're going to end up with a huge, huge um, lineup, like thousands of people. They have to make planes wait on the tarmac and not unload. Sometimes for hours, because at least this is what happened when we went to Holland and back. Because they, the lineup inside was so long. And then we went and we did disembark, and the lineup was so long, you know, the whole way back, long, long before you get into this room, which has lines going everywhere. It was way back in the main corridor. Couldn't get down the stairs. I thought, oh, I'll take the elevator and I'll bypass all that. I didn't bypass a thing. It was all just a wall of people downstairs. So I would not suggest flying to Canada at the moment, but Air Canada has now canceled 175 flights a day because it's too much for the airport to handle. And I don't know why they have so many flights if they don't have enough pilots anymore. See, everybody got new jobs, right? When when you, you got to have a job or you don't have a house or whatever, and so everybody that got laid off found things too, and it's the same with the airplane system, and everybody wants to travel now. Anyway. It's nice to sit here, talk about the animals. So we've got two raccoons. There's a big one that's not too big, like he's maybe a two-year-old one, and then another one which is young. I don't think he's this year's. He might be a year old. He's be a foot long, and the other one's probably a foot and a half or a lot, a lot rounder. But they come out in the daytime, which is so weird. Like on a sunny afternoon, the raccoons will come out, but they can't have rabies or else they would be foaming at the mouth, right? But if they do get rabies, raccoon rabies, it'll kill them all off. We used to have a lot of raccoons, but we only have two. Oh, and then we have squirrels. Remember the red squirrel that got in the house? Well, when we went away, we made the mistake of leaving our sliding glass doors open. Two doors were wide open for two weeks. So when we got back, and we of course shut the doors, there was a squirrel in the house, and he dug a hole under the stairs through the wood in the bottom riser. And then the next time we were gone and came back, he had chewed the, the white plastic off of the, of the cupboard. Oh, look, it matches my dress. My little granddaughter painted my nails. <laughs> anyway, um, so... So I borrowed a trap, a have a heart trap. Yeah, and those squirrels are dangerous because if they start chewing on wires, like down in the basement, you may have wires that are not covered. And if they get into the the wires that have, you know, the insulation, they like the taste of the insulation, I guess. It's plastic or something. But it, once they bite those two metal, the metal wires inside the... So the, if, a, if a squirrel bites into a piece of electrical wire, he bites through the insulation. It looks pretty red right there. Why does it look so red? Nothing on it. Um, he bites through and he makes contact with the two wires. Then he will be cutting, making a short in the wire and he will burst into flames. And then you have this little ball of flame in your house, which will then burn your house down. So red squirrels are pretty dangerous. So I um, bought, brought home Ben's Have a Heart Trap. And these traps are so much easier to set now. The handle is leaning one way. You lift it up and lean it the other way. You know, up and down. And you have it there. And then it opens the door and keeps it open. Unbelievable. So simple. Anyway, the first day we put it in there, put some 
walnuts in there out of the shell and the next thing we know we had a very upset squirrel in the trap so Willem drove them away far away across the river a few miles their their territory is only about 200 feet or 200 meters or something and then um, so we did it again and the next day we caught another one a smaller one not real small but maybe a mother and a father it's hard to tell, but I didn't see it was, it didn't appear to be nursing, but it could have been previously. And so that one went to the same location as the first one, you know, keep the families all together. So, so um, now I don't know if there's more or not. There was a lot of, of squirrel poop around in the, in the living room where the, the cage was, but it could have been that while he was stuck in there, he was jumping around so much that it scattered and went every direction. So I vacuumed everything up so I'll be able to see if there's any more happening in there. I hope we got them all. But they could be parents and have a family that's down there in the basement. And depending on the, the size of them, you know, they may die or they may be okay and live and appear. So I've got the trap still set. Keep the trap set for the rest of the summer, I think. There, so that's our wildlife. A bear, two squirrels in the house, two squirrels, or two um, raccoons under the deck. And they've got quite a little pile of poop. They've been using that same spot every day on the bottom step. But I haven't seen any parent raccoons. I'd like to put up a camera outside. And the four deer sightings from today. Two as I walked in by the moat, or to the moat, or along, along the pond. And then one snorted in the woods. And then one as I came back. So let me go back in now. Some people started other topics, so I should talk about that. I'm so glad you guys are all here. All right, so we talked about um, blocking those people. I hid them. I don't think it does any good to um, report them anymore because they just come back or they come back with another name. They just keep changing their name. Um, let's see what else was saying. So that's interesting that they can burn off the nerves in your back. That would be awesome. That would really be awesome. Actually, my back has not been too bad. I've been very careful. Oh. Oh. What else did you say? Mm. The gas tax is going to be going up for in a many places, some as soon as this month, July. So the tax is going up. That's interesting. I thought that they were talking about lowering taxes on gas in the United States. I know they lowered the tax on gas here. And the price of gas is going down a little bit. It was $2.09 a liter. How many liters in a gallon? Three and a half. Two, four, six, seven dollars a gallon. That's what we pay. But now it, it was two twenty in Ottawa. And it was 209, I mean, not in Ottawa, in Toronto, and it was 209, but now it was $1.98 or something. So we can pretend that's cheap. Isn't it nice? We say, oh, it's so much cheaper here. And I'm like, hello. The snorts make me laugh, Nancy. I love it when I make the deer snort and hoof. Wait a minute. I love it when I make the deer snort and hoof because of me. We get along well, though. Yeah, I remember the 70s when when the gas when they lowered the the speed limit to 55. That was a smart move. I remember testing it to see how much difference in the amount of gas I used when it was when I went 55 versus 60 uh, miles an hour. And it was a lot of difference. It, and so here it's like it's in kilometers. So 60 is 100. 
And most of the time, people want you to go 60, even though the speed limit is 50 most places, 50 kilometers an hour. No, 50 miles an hour. 80 kilometers an hour, but they want you to go 100 kilometers an hour, and so they push you. So I'm in the habit of just pulling off. As soon as somebody comes roaring up behind me, I just pull off on the shoulder. Because I like having a nice leisurely drive. I'm an old lady now. I'm just an old lady driver. I just go slow. Not that slow. Sometimes I go fast. <sighs> I'll let you look at my view for a moment. It's a pretty view. Maybe when we're watching it, the deer will show up. But I'm swinging along. Here's to old ladies. Even though we were are still young, our bodies beg to differ. Yeah, we don't change age. You know that. You still are the same age as you were when you were 8 or 10 or 12 or 16 or 20. You're still that same person with those same feelings and thoughts. And we have gained wisdom. I have my new saying. This is my Nancyism. You may use it. It goes like this. Wisdom is the consolation prize for messing up. <laughs> so we gain a lot of wisdom, don't we? Yeah, our bodies age. We just live in them. They're like our glove. And it's getting old and tattered and torn. But the rest, our brain, our mind, our, our, our spirit, not our mind, I don't know, who we are is different than our bodies. We are ageless. We have always lived. We will always live. We are eternal beings. Say it that again, Nancy. Wisdom. Okay, it goes like this. Wisdom is the consolation prize for screwing up or messing up or making mistakes. Making mistakes is good, because when you make mistakes, you, be, you get wisdom. You know how not to do it, because you've tried all those ways, and they don't work. And then you're wise enough to know that that doesn't work. We'll try this. And you can look at somebody else that's doing that thing that you did that doesn't work, and you can think, that's not going to work. It's not going to make you happy. You think it's going to make you happy, but it's not. I promise you it won't, but they don't like to listen. Just like when you're walking or running, the slower you go, the more energy to be energetic you will. The more energy to be more energetic you will be. <sighs> You've learned your crondom. Lots of mistakes there, eh? Yeah. The less speed that you travel, the less fuel that you will burn, too. That's right. So I thought, um, I, so I filled up the, the car as full as it would go, past where it just automatically stops, right to the very top. And I went to Ottawa and back and filled it up right to the very top. It spilled over a bit, so I put in too much. But I think it cost $23 to go to Ottawa and back. But, you know, I thought that, like, 10, 20 years ago, I thought it cost $20 to go to Ottawa. But now, as an artist, I learn mistakes can turn into awesome works of art. I just keep at it until I make it beautiful to me. Mistakes are opportunities to try and get it right. Oh, that's true. You know, I was weaving these this willow bush together. And it's got so many sprouts coming up, and they're very long. They're like two, three feet long. And, and so I'm weaving the longest of them around the rest, and then I weave another one around them. And, and then more shoots will come up from that. The importance of rest, like a video you had done talked about on some time back, too. 
So this is grateful. He's saying, I'm and I mean as in to be able to go to last longer. And just like when you're walking or running, the slower you go, the more energy to be energetic you will be. It's interesting. Oh. There's some damselflies here. So the family's coming over today. At 2, they were going to come, but now I think they've got other things going on as well. So they're not going to come right here. Which gives me a little more time to do nothing. Hi, D. Woods. It's been a while since I've been here. This is Daniel. I condensed my name on here. Nice to see you, Daniel. The pine bark beverage holder was so cool, Nancy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I had fun. You know, there's these there's pine trees on the land, the property beside my sister's land. And um, I was wondering if any of those pine trees broke because we did have a lot of storms here as well. So weird now. None of the storms are normal. Nothing is normal. In Ottawa, we had a storm a few weeks ago. And there were so many broken trees that... There's a vehicle stopping down there at my grass hut. I think they pulled and parked. Oh, they're going very slowly. It's an RV. Must have slowed right down so they can take a picture of it. I am serious. I think you had referred to it as the constant rest, as if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. I could have said anything. Anything is possible. If I think it, it comes out, but I don't necessarily, th again, so... <laughs> Sometimes I see things I've written to people that, are, that sound like they're very wise, you know. I'm like, wow, I wrote that? So is that vehicle gone now? See, I can see from here. I can keep a good watch on things. Let me just... Let me have a look here now. So if we do this... See, I can see the highway over there. No, they don't have vehicle trouble. They stop and they take pictures. Some of them they get out and they go look. So I guess my view is these trees here and this branch here is kind of blocking the view. But I don't want to cut them because I like them. They give a little bit of shade around this area. <sighs> See, these are my plants. These are those Scottish bells. It's very steep. It's not really a path. It's the cliff. Let me see if I stand up. Oopsie. You can see it. And this drops off, just like this over here. We're on top of a very high pinnacle. These things still want to grow out of this. Look, this is where the hostas used to be. But then we extended the deck, da -dum, da dum and now the hostas are still growing under there. This is a basswood tree. Some of these bits of face everywhere. Now you are probably too close. Come down here. I hope we are still with me. See, this is my little place where I covered all the logs up. Planted flowers on it. And that's where the bear was over in the corner. And then he went in that direction. Look at this. 
Isn't this neat? All that is growing on top of this elm stump. Okay, so I was gonna show you this. This is the cliff. I was thinking it would be nice to have a set of stairs here. I do have a rope, which I could hold on to as I get down there. And I have a little pathway here. You remember the three hammocks? The battery. Oh, well, I'll have to get out of here to go check the battery. But you never know. If it dies, it's over. You don't have to wait. So this is a, um, a, a lilac. These are lilacs here. Those are the three hammocks in there. It takes a lot to reclaim the place, you know. Jones is. Uh, what did you say? We'll walk around and check things out. So I have three hammocks there, but I think it's time to to change the ropes because I don't trust them anymore. I don't want to fall. I have a little pathway there I made. Oh, it's buffering. So true, we have not had big storms at all this year in Missouri. They keep saying it's going to storm today, but it gets pushed back every hour. I finally got that emptied. So I cut paths down there. I'm saving all the rose petals. Squirrel poop. The roses, the rose chafers eat them. Starn rose chafers. Good. So I cut some pathways. But I have to get in there and remove all the grasses that are in there. This one doesn't look too bad. Isn't that a pretty rose bush? You should see my son's. It's amazing. I should take a picture of it. And this is, and the Apple bush, apple tree didn't do too badly this year. The bugs didn't eat it all. And then there's the, this is forsythia. Lots of forsythia growing in there now. And I put all these hoses, I hung them up in different places. So we now have, the trees have come over even further. Look how much has grown this year. All this. It's all new growth from there. See, it was new growth to there last year, and this is new growth this year. You could probably tell the age of the tree by counting those sections. One, two, three, four, Five. So in five years, it's grown from being there all the way out to there. Isn't that amazing? Good thing I didn't put the railing there because the railing would be hidden now. And look, see, the hydrangea looks good too. Isn't that nice? Except you can't get in there anymore. Oh well, the hydrangea is better than being able to get in there. And over there is our campfire spot on the driveway. I'll see if I can look at it from this direction. See, I made a nice little a nice little campfire area. Oh, and I put the cushion the cushion box. I put it out there so that it's where we need it when we were going to go for a have a campfire. And, and look at this. All nicely trimmed. Isn't that pretty? 
all these little bricks. Looks like my thing fell down. I'm taking these down. I may move this grapevine because after all these years, it's still just not happening. I put together another swing to replace the swing that's at the camp. I'm going to make a pathway here and then go around there. I don't want to cut this stuff. There's some nice flowers there, so I'm going to make it that way. Well, there's grapes on there, but the rose chafers are eating them all. The raccoons have been setting up camp here. I had to cut a bit so I could get down there. Isn't that a darling swing? I found the frame at the on the roadside, but I haven't finished it, so one of these days I have to finish it. Yeah, those rose chafers are not really my friends. So I'm glad that bear didn't come up onto the deck this way, because then he would have gotten trapped. And when they're trapped, they don't like things. This has to be, I might as well just take it apart. Just unscrew it all, take it apart, and then build it up again and, and build the railing. But I don't have my, my drill, all my stuff is at the camp. There we go, and we're back where we started. That couch should probably go somewhere else since it's not in a really good spot for it. There. There, we're back. Now what's been happening? I wonder if the bear will go after my hummingbird feeder now. Hmm, maybe. And rose hydrangeas. So, um, thanks my very nice jar. Mother Nature has Daniel, I will try to send them your way, but I don't always do like I tell them. Mine are an old bush, smell magnificently. Send those storms over here. I'm dying for a horrendous storm. I love thunderstorms. Yes, yes. Well when we get those the storms we had lately, one in Ottawa, it it broke so many trees, it was worse than the ice storm back twenty something years ago, ninety-eight. 98, 108, 18, 19, 21, 22. I should replace that Canada flag on my teepee down there. It's all tattered. But I didn't want to put up my Canada flag earlier because it seems like they have, these rebellious people are using the Canada flag to make some rebellious point. Yeah, if the power goes off a lot, that's not very fun, is it? But it seems like you're the kind of person, Rose, that can that can make do, right? But it's hard work when you don't have power. You have to work harder. I think that's a that's a red uh, red vireo red. Red-eyed vireo. Storms knock down the electrical wires we're using. Hmm. Not good. Not good. But, and this is just the beginning, isn't it? Like, it's all just getting worse and worse and worse. And the, the UN Council or something, so we are so totally not on target for any of our climate, you know, less CO2 in the atmosphere you know and then it, you know it's very possible we'll have world war three you know by the fall or something it looks like it's going to come and um and if that happens well you know canada just spent a few billion dollars or they earmarked a few billion dollars for a norad defense system up at the arctic because you know who's on the other side of the arctic and they like their expansion thing and they, I don't know. I don't know how much weaponry they've got or what they think they're going to accomplish, but they have trimmed the trees back around the wires recently, and that seems to have helped a great deal. 
Yeah, that's good. I was looking at our wires the other day thinking that our the trees around ours are very, very close to them. Willem is playing the piano. I should do something useful. Let's go inside and listen to him play the piano. Yeah, he can't play for very long because they do hurt him. signal. So I guess I'm going to end it. It's nice talking to you. Goodbye. You can Google them. Nancy today, Willem playing the piano. Or Willem piano. You'll get lots. Bye-bye. Thanks for hanging out.